Holy Wire Mod. Holy Wire Mod here, and this is going to be tutorial 8 in the Lua series where we're going to be covering timers. However, before beginning, I want to briefly go back for a second on the topic of Friendly Fire, which was the last video. And there was an annotation I made in that video when covering that. And I just want to show you guys this is what it looks like when you actually add the code for the annotation. And this is to consider fall damage from the world because remember, the world is an entity. So you can check for if the attacker is a world. If so, true, allow the damage. So that's going to permit fall damage. Or if you want to deny all fall damage, you can just put false. So that's a little interesting thing I thought I'd include. Anyway, let's get to timers. So when people tend to teach this, they like to start with timer create. And I'm going to do that in addition to other methods. So the reason I'm putting it in GM function player spawn is so we can get a player because I'm going to make this so where we regenerate health every one second. So the first thing you're going to need to do, because there's four arguments in this, is you need to give it a name. So we're going to give an identifier as HP regen. But because this impacts every player that comes onto the server, we're going to make this timer unique to only that player. And how we do that is we concatenate a value and we get the player's unique user ID. So we do that by doing play user ID, just like this. So altogether, it's HP regeneration and some ID, which is only unique to the player. And that just, it removes a bunch of issues so you don't have multiple players triggering, triggering the same timer and all that stuff. Anyway, so the next argument here is going to be um, how long do you, or how many times within the total interval do you want the function or the timer's event to trigger. So we'll say that every one second we want to regenerate health. How long do you want it to last is the third argument. The duration would be zero seconds being infinite, so it won't stop, but we're just going to keep it simple for right now and put it at 10 seconds. And then we're going to include the function that we want to execute. And remember, you have to end your function and also do not forget your parentheses. That's very typical to do that. So. Just to recap really quick, HP regen user ID for every one second up to a total of 10 seconds is going to ex execute this function. All right. So let's set it to where we're going to regenerate health. And to do that, we're going to use the set health command. It's very similar to how we did it in here, vamp crowbar with the math clamp function. So just for those who didn't see that, uh, math clamp limits the value a number can be between a uh, minimum value and a maximum value. So we're going to set health and we're going to say we want the health to be the player's health at the moment plus one. And we want the minimum value to be no less than one. And actually we'll just put it zero. You can do that too. Works fine. And the maximum value that we do not want the health to exceed is going to be the player's maximum health, which is represented by this right here. Okay, so as it is right now, a player will join the server and regenerate health over time. But also, before we do that, real quick, I would like to also mention the second way to make a timer, which does not require an ID at all. And that will say at the end of this timer, it's going to be a simple timer. But at the end of this timer right here, we're going to set it up to where it prints something in chat really quick. All right. So we'll do that by doing timer.simple. And after 11 seconds, we want to execute this function. And that function is going to be the print message command, which you need to put this right here. It's going to be HUD underscore print talk in all caps and whatever your message is going to be. So put like holy wire mod or something. So after 11 seconds of spawning as the player, it's going to print this into the chat box. So these are the two major methods and we're going to go over some more methods in just a second. So let's go in game and see how this does. All right, so we're now in game. So I'm going to kill myself so that I spawn again. And as you can see, the timer works. My health is incrementing by one per second for 10 seconds and at the end of this 10 seconds the simple timer at 11 seconds is going to trigger and say holy wire mod in chat like it just did. Now 
let us say that we want to explore a couple more functions for timer. We'll say that uh, we want to count how many more repetitions are left in the timer. So we can do that. Let's just copy and paste this real quick. We can do that by saying, okay, we'll put reps left, and we'll concatenate this timer reps left function. And that's going to require that you put the identifier of the timer that you want the remaining repetitions of. And let's also say that we want the time for the next repetition. All right, so, or we'll just say, yeah, well, time left, next rep. All right, so time left for the next repetition. So generally it's gonna be this value or some value close to it because there's a little bit of delay, as you'll see in a second. But let's get this command in. It's very similar to reps left, so I'm just gonna copy and paste, but time left. And again, just put your unique identifier. I'm gonna save that and go in game and kill. All right, so now you can see in chat it says reps left eight seven six five four three two one boom okay and then time left till next rep as you can see it is close to this number of one right here however here you can see that there is slightly a bit of delay so if you want this as an accurate representation or a more consistent representation I recommend rounding it up so it is now a whole number one instead but if you want the delay, that's up to you. There's no right, wrong way of doing it. So anyway, we can also do some more timer commands such as timer pause, for example. And we need identifier, and this is gonna pause the timer as you guessed it. And we can also do unpause, and these don't really need examples per se, but or we don't really have to go in game for this. And we also have something interesting called toggle. So what toggle does is if the timer is paused, it will unpause it. If it's unpaused, it will pause it. So it's very useful. It's like a, a negation in Boolean algebra. Very, very useful. So let's get rid of those. And also something which follows very similar format to the timer create is one called timer adjust. So just like timer create, we have four arguments. The first one being the identifier, as you saw above. Then you have the duration. So let's say instead of every one second to heal one health, we want it every two seconds. And we want it to do it infinitely. And you can even change the function if you want to, but I'm just gonna set to this line and not include this. So you're not gonna see this print in chat anymore after I save it and kill myself in game. So let's do that. So as you can see, it no longer says the reps left and all that in game. So timer adjust is working fine. And for those confused why it's doing that, it's because you take an order of operations and it's going to execute this then after creating the timer, it's going to adjust the timer and reset it to these credentials. Now, let's say that the player is no longer on the server, so you don't need this timer anymore. It's just wasting memory and wasting space and all that stuff. So a good way to do that is to actually go right here. We'll go here and there's a nice um, function in a GM library called player disconnected. It's called whenever a player leaves the server and just like player spawned, it has an argument play. All right, so we're gonna be using that to get rid of the timer. So we're gonna say function GM player disconnected. And here, uh, we're going to first check if the timer exists, which is a very useful timer function to prevent errors and whatnot happening. So we'll say, timer and HP regen dot 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 user ID and all that uh, so we have our identifier and it will return true if it does exist and false if it doesn't 
So if it does exist, we're going to remove the timer. Now remove used to be destroy. For those curious why destroy, oops, if I can spell it right, destroy, or destroy, or destroy, or destroy. So uh, it used to look like this. However, they updated it to remove. Destroy is going to be removed at a later date. So we can destroy the timer or remove the timer with this function. So all you really need is the identifier. So as soon as I disconnect, this timer will no longer exist. There's no real way for me to show you that. So um, that's going to be something we're not going to do an in-game example on. So, But anyway, these are the most important timer functions that you're going to be using. Uh, if you have any more questions or concerns about timer topics, please let me know.